Oh, what did they do exactly? Yeah, right. What exactly does the Joint Health and Safety Committee do? Or what does the Occupational Health and Safety Committee do? What are their duties? And it's a question I've seen asked lots in many different workplaces. Now, to understand that, it's also important to understand that the exact roles of a Joint Occupational Health and Safety Committee varies from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. In general, however, though, the committee assists the employer and supports any health and safety personnel that may be employed in the organization by advocating health and safety at the organizational level and participating in many of the health and safety functions. Now what I've done is I've taken and I've put these duties and grouped them together in four broad categories. But before we begin, it's important to note that many jurisdictions require health and safety committee member representation or a health and safety representative to participate in many of the core health and safety functions, such as incident investigations. It's important that you familiarize yourself with the requirements of your local OHS authority. But anyway, let's dive in and have a look at these duties and what they're comprised of. Right, let's dive in. Really and truthfully, the Health and Safety Committee, one of their main duties is to be visible participants and promoters of the health and safety program and its activities. Think of this, leaders by example. Their main job, of course, is promoting the health and safety policy and the health and safety program to their co-workers and, of course, others. By others, I mean contractors, consultants, and, of course, visitors. Now, think of this. If yours is an organization that has frequent visitors on the work site, you may look at trying to involve different health and safety committee members in these visiting entourages and tours, if you will. Now, the other thing that health and safety committees do is they assist in the education and training of new workers. New worker orientation is essential. In fact, it's a requirement in a lot of different jurisdictions. I did another video on it. Send me a link to that video. And yes, yes, there'll be a link in the description. But think of this, if you're short staffed and already stretched to the limit, maybe your health and safety committee membership can help. Even by, you know what, reviewing the current process of health and safety onboarding and making recommendations for streamlining and efficiency. Now, the other thing that the health and safety committee's members do is they often are championing best practice approaches to health and safety, and of course, the adoption of best practices wherever possible, and then of course, leading by example by implementing these best practices within their normal everyday work life. Now, health and safety committees are also involved in the process of hazard recognition and risk assessment for things that may cause injury, illness, or workplace incidents. And part of this is achieved by participating in the workplace health and safety inspection process. Now, the other thing is health and safety committees participate or should be participating in health and safety inquiries and, of course, incident investigation in the workplace. Health and safety committees should be and need to be involved in health and safety program development or health and safety management system development. They should be participating in the development and Im implementation of different parts and processes within the safety management system. And this is usually done with consultation at the stakeholder level with the different groups they represent and, of course, collaboration within different work groups within the organization. They're really good at setting up and promoting programs to improve health and safety training amongst the employees and, of course, health and safety education amongst the workforce. Or if there's health and safety personnel on staff, health and safety committees can be used to rep, uh, support them as needed in this duty. One of the things that health and safety committees are really good at is consulting with professional and technical experts. Or, depending on your membership, you may have technical expertise already at hand. Think of this, if you have an electrician on your health and safety committee and you want to do a focus on electrical safety, you've got your technical expertise right there. Wow, that's brilliant. Yeah, isn't it? Now, the other thing that you can involve the health and safety committee in is reviewing the health and safety programs of other companies, especially if those other companies are working quite well and efficiently, and you can use parts of those programs to enhance your own program. Now, another thing that health and safety committees are used for is health and safety management system, working within the program and processes to achieve quality control and quality assurance. Now, what I mean by that is they can be used to monitor the effectiveness of the health and safety program and the different procedures. Part of this might be taking little bits and chunks and comparing that to existing legislation for compliance. What they will do is they will make recommendations to the management or to the employer for incident prevention and safety program activities as well upon this review. 
Part of this quality assurance process is to ensure the maintenance and monitoring of the program data that's created from the health and safety management system. Now I'm talking about review of inspection records, incident reports, and of course, hazard assessment records. Often what the committee will do is monitor and follow up on preventive measures and corrective actions after review of these documents as part of that quality control and quality assurance process. As I've said, it's important that you have that equal balance within the Health and Safety Committee because they represent both the workforce and the management regarding health and safety concerns. So part of this representation is responding to management employee concerns, their complaints, and of course suggestions regarding health and safety. Not only that, Health and Safety Committee members will assist the employer in the resolution of workplace safety complaints, work refusals, and work stoppages. In fact, many jurisdictions require Occupational Health and Safety Committee representation during these investigations. Now, of course, after these investigations are completed, Health and Safety Committees will make recommendations to the employer to promote, adopt, or implement safe work practices or corrective actions upon conclusion of these investigations. Now, it's important to realize that health and safety must transcend organization hierarchy and workplace politics. Failure to do this means you're going to fail at demonstrating a genuine concern for health and safety. So you have to make sure that any recommendations to the employer made are made with a concern to correct hazards and achieve a better health and safety environment for your organization, not as a political leverage or anything else like that. So just to put it all together, health and safety committees are proactive participants in the health and safety program activities, including core activities of identifying, assessing, and recommending corrective actions to eliminate or at least reduce hazards. They are an integral part of the health and safety program and the program development by supporting health and safety personnel and participating in the development and implementation of different parts of the program. They assist the employer with safety program and program process, quality control and quality assurance. Think of it this way, more eyes help to spot deficiencies and shortfalls. Now the other and last thing that they do and possibly the most important is they represent both workforce and management regarding health and safety concerns, and then they make practicable, realistic, and effective recommendations for the resolution of these safety concerns. Members of a Joint Occupational Health and Safety Committee have to demonstrate a genuine concern for the health and safety of every single member of the organization for the committee to actually be effective in promoting the health and safety management system and to foster a positive safety culture. Now, thank you for hanging out and sticking around to the end of the video. Now. If you're interested in, in further on the dynamics of the membership of a health and safety committee, I'm gonna leave a link up in this corner regarding the different roles within the committee itself and what, they're, what they do. I'm also gonna leave a link up in this corner to help you with further training in the health and safety committee process on incident investigation. So have a look at both and let me know your thoughts. And on that note, I appreciate every comment. Now, until we see each other again, and I hope we do, do me a favor. Don't just think about safety, don't just talk about safety, but be that good example. Provoke safety and do safety wherever you end up. Take care. Bye for now.